Okay, hello guys. Uh, firstly, I think I can have a brief self introduction. My name is Bojo, and currently I'm a PhD student at USC Viterbi College of Engineering. So I have this idea of making this video because, firstly, I think it would be very good for my learning, and secondly, I think it would also be very very beneficial for my teaching practice. So, here in this video, I want to make a brief introduction to machine learning. What is machine learning and what are the terminologies commonly used in machine learning? And this may seem very easy for those uh, machine learning engineers who have practiced this for years. But I think it would also be very good for those uh, beginners in machine learning field. Okay, I think now machine learning is in every aspect of our lives. For example, if you come across a, a face recognition system, there will be machine learning algorithms in, uh, inside of it. It can identify who you are, your age, and every information behind you. And uh, surprisingly, I think iPhone uh, Apple company now is developing some face recognition system which can uh, recognize uh, humans with mask. So now currently uh, everyone is wearing a mask and I think uh, Apple is developing those very advanced algorithms which can identify everyone under the mask. I think the second example uh, of machine learning in our life is that uh, when you want to buy something online on Amazon, that will if you search for some items, and next time you open the Amazon, you will find that Amazon will rec recommend some items based on your search history before. That's because Amazon has recorded your search history, and they run some machine learning algorithms and they decide that you will buy these items with a great possibility. So they recommend, they will recommend you with these uh, items from their system. So all these examples demonstrate that machine learning now is in every aspect of our life. And it is also a very hot, hot topic in every field in academia. So uh, I think firstly, I can start with the definition of machine learning. Okay, and one very popular definition of machine learning is, okay, when you say these two words, machine and learning, what do you will think of? Machine, you will think nothing but a computer, a laptop, a desktop computer. And learning, what is learning? Actually, every day we are learning. Learning is learning seems to be very easy for our human being, but it may not be that easy for a machine, for a computer. So the first definition is that machine learning is a field of study. So it's a field of study. Who study? The machine will study. Okay. Study that that gives computers. The ability to learn. without being explicit programmed. Okay, so this is the first definition and is also a very popular definition for machine learning. So it says that machine learning is a very big field for study 
So it's a field of study. And it gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So the meaning of without being explicitly programmed is that you don't need to tell the computer very clearly by coding what they need to do. So maybe you just need to uh, tell them you need to take the derivative of this one and you can tell me the result. So you just don't need to tell them everything they need to do and they can do it. So this is the first definition of machine learning. And the second definition is from, uh, from a book. So it is more clear. So machine learning is a computer program that is that can learn from experience. So machine learning is a program that can learn from experience. So what do we mean by experience? So here it means data. So here you should keep in mind that machine learning, in machine learning, data or experience is very important. Okay, with respect to some task. So in a learning process, you can have the experience, but you should also have some tasks. What you need to do, what you need to predict, what you need to optimize. So these are the tasks and it will give you a, per, uh, a direction of your, of your project or your algorithm. And performance measure. And you also need to have some performance measure to measure how good you are performing. For example, uh, if you are taking a course, and so you will learn from the experience of your, uh, of your instructor. And you also will have some tasks. So here your task is to perform good in the midterm, in the final exam, and also in your homework. So this is your task. And you will have some performance measure. So the performance measure would be the scores and the grade you will get from your homework and from your midterm, from your final exams. So it will tell you how good you perform in these uh, in these tasks, and you may perform better next time. Okay, and I think another definition is that so machine learning is a set of methods that can automatically detect pattern in data and then use these patterns to predict future data. So here, one thing that is very important is that it can automatically detect. You don't need to tell it how you detect. You just need to give it the data and it can detect the pattern in data. 
And the next step, so this is the first step. And the next step would be once the data, once the pattern is obtained, you can use this pattern to predict the future data. And the second step is also very important because th that is our goal. That is our task. We ha already have those experience here. We already have those data. We just want to predict what our future data would behave. So I think machine learning is nothing but Mathematical pattern recognition. So I think I can also give machine learning a definition as, so machine learning is just some algorithms or some coding that can detect the mathematical pattern in our data. So at USC, uh, electronic engineering department. There is a very popular course that is EE 559. So the course name, the name of this course is changed now to uh, supervised learning. But before that, the name of this course is mathematical pattern recognition. So we can see that machine learning is just some uh, mathematical pattern recognition work or some optimization work. Okay, so here we have uh, defined what is machine learning and these definitions seems to be very boring. But I think after I give you some examples, it would give, uh, it would be uh, more clear on this. So next, I think I want to talk about some terminologies or some terms commonly used in machine learning. And I think we will use these terms uh, very frequently. So you should know what they are. So first, first term, we will often talk about is data. So we are all very familiar with data. We know what is data. Data is nothing but numbers, right? But here in machine learning, data is very important. Actually, machine learning is data driven. What do we mean? by saying machine learning is data driven. For example, if you have very limited data, you cannot have a very good machine learning algorithm. And on the other hand, if you have enough data, if you have a large number of data, but the, the, the quality of your data is not good, the pattern of your data is, is not good. So you can also not have a very, uh, very good machine learning algorithm. So here, machine learning is data driven here. Okay, so here, suppose we have 100% of data. So we, we will represent this by percentage. And we have some other terminologies. Firstly, you will also often uh, hear, or you can also often see in some papers is training data. And another terminology is testing data or a training data set or testing data set. And one optional uh, data set is called development or validation data set. And so you can see here, uh, if you have 100% of data, and here we usually will split uh, this 100% data into some percentage to training, testing, and development data set. 
So usually the training data will account for most part of your data. So the percentage is usually 80%. And the testing data set will usually account for, so we have 20% left. So this will account for 10% if we have the development data set. And of course, you can do a very simple uh, calculation here. So the development data set will account for 10%. So it goes to 100%. So as for, as for what uh, will you do, you can also see that uh, from the words, it will be very clear that what you will do in these data sets. For example, in a training data set. So it is called training data set because you can make a guess what we will do in a training data set. Yeah, right. We will train the model here. So the purpose of training data set is that we will train the model inside of the training data set. And for the testing data set, it is also very clear what we will do in this data set. Yes, we will test the model. We will test the performance of our model by the uh, testing data set. And for the development or validation data set, so the purpose is that we will use this for tune hyperparameters. As for what is tuning hyperparameters and what is hyperparameters, I think I will cover it in later lectures. So here we have this data set. And one thing you should One thing you should keep in mind is that these three data set can never be overlapped. Okay, here we have talked about what is data. And the second term I want to talk about is what is model? So model is also a very important uh, term in machine learning. So it's, so training a model is training a optimal model or training a best model is your task in the uh, machine learning in your, in your project or in your in your goal. So I can give you a very example of what is model. So we all know this linear equation y equals 2x. So this is a model. Why? Because you can see it can predict some y based on x. So this is a model. And, and we can also give a little bit complicated linear equation, 2x plus 3. So this is also a model. So here we call this term bias. So this is a model with bias term. And we can write this model into the uh, vector form. So we usually write something in vector or in matrix in machine learning. And how can we write this in a matrix form? So I will write this in a dot product or in a product. So here I will just put the coefficient of the bias as the first one and put the coefficient of the, of the X as the second term. So if you do this in a product, so three would multiply with just one here and two will multiply with X. So we can further rewrite this as, so here we define this one 
or the coefficient. So although there is no x uh, with 3, we can assume that 3 is multiplied with x raised to the power of 0. So here we, pu we put all the coefficient as a row vector. So we define this row vector as omega. So this would be not just a letter. So this letter represents for a vector here. So here I will put omega transpose. And this one, so this one would be our input. So I will name this just as x. So it would be omega transpose multiply with x. So you can see, you may be confused that why this one is transpose and this one is not. Because these are two vectors. And by default, we will assume that all those vectors in machine learning is column vectors. So omega is actually not this one. Omega should be this one. So when you transpose it, it will go to here. It will go to 3, 2 in a row vector. So this is nothing but a inner product. So this one, you can also rewrite this as x in the product, or omega in the product with x. OK, so you should remember here that all vectors are column vectors. If you see a transpose, so it will be mean a row vector. OK, let's, let's get back to uh, our model here. So we said that, so this is the model we got. So this is the model. And they are all equal to this one. We are very familiar. It comes from a very familiar linear equation from this one. And we just write it in the in the product form, and it goes to this one. OK, suppose this is the model we have found. And we want to use this model to make predictions. OK, for example, uh, if you want to predict the price of a house in Los Angeles, and what you don't, what you need to input is just. So we will use y hat as the prediction from model. It's just notation here. We will put a y hat. So if you want to predict the house, the price of the house, so. Here we just have one x. Suppose the x is the area of the house, and you may so you will use two multiply with maybe this would be a one thousand square feet house in plus three. So you will get the price. It would be two thousand and three. So this is your final prediction here. So in this process, we uh, come from a very uh, simple linear equation that you are all very familiar with. So we call this as model here. And we use this model, so here, and we use this model to predict the future, uh, future data. So here, 1000 is a future data. So maybe it comes from the uh, testing data or some future data. And we made that prediction as this, this is our uh, prediction here. So uh, during this process, we have performed the machine learning. So machine learning can be very easy. And of course, you may ask why this model is so simple. Can I add more, more terms here? Can I add, for example, can I add some uh, x to the uh, square or or here you just have one x can I have some z can I have some m can I have some m the answer is yes you can have so this this is uh, so this one is the simplest model I just gave you the example but in practice yes this would be used we will have more input such as this one, 
we we will not determine the household price by just the area. We will detect, uh, we will predict the, the household price by, for example, by the number of rooms, by the locations, and we will have many inputs here. So yes, we will have more complicated models, but this is the simplest one, I think. Okay, another very important terminology is features. So in a previous example, to predict the price of the house, we just give the area of the house. Of course, we can have other inputs. So before that, I call it inputs. But from now on, I will call them features because this is a formal terminology in machine learning. So for example, what is features? For example, a main. How can we describe a main? We will describe it by by his uh, by his features, right? For example, I will we will describe him how height he is. Maybe his height is uh, is five point five feet. Maybe this is not accurate. And and we we can also describe it by his weight. So his weight is one fifty pound. And of course, you can have many other things to describe it. So all these numbers that is unique to him is his features. So this is feature one. This is feature two. And another example is that we have we have demonstrated that how can we describe a house? Of course, we can describe a house by its area. Maybe it's 1,000 square feet. And we can also buy, uh, we can also describe the, a house by the number of rooms. It will equal to five or six or something. And one thing you may find that all the features are represented by numbers here. But what if I want to describe a man that is his rich or not rich? And this is feature three. Rich equals yes or no. What is this feature is a yes or no problem, is a false or true problem. All our computers can only recognize numbers. Computers cannot recognize yes or no problems. So here, yes, you may, you may think, you may have think of this. So maybe we can represent yes or no problem by numbers. So if the main is rich, we give it a feature of one. If the if the main is not rich, we give it a zero. So all features are represented by numbers. by numbers. Okay. And the last term I want to talk about is labels. Labels. So labels are very commonly used in our life, we put some labels for our items that we are frequently use. For example, your name. So name is a label. Name is nothing but a label we put on. Uh, we put on everybody. If you call somebody's name, that that guy will know that you you are calling him. So. So uh, I think labels are just 
what you want to do and uh, it depends on your purpose. For example, in, uh, in the classification problem, for example, if you want to classify a main, you may just uh, use the name as the label. Or in regression problem, no worries, I will talk about classification and regression. In regression problem, what is label? For example, in this house price prediction, the label is the Y. So the labels is the price of the house. So in different problem, in classification or regression problem, we have different labels. Okay, we have talked about data, we have talked about model, we have talked about feature, and we have talked about labels. And how to connect them together. So one data is, so one data is composed of, I will use this equal notation here, is equal to many features. It's not hard to understand because if you want to describe the main, you will use many features to describe it. So here, how can we represent those features in machine learning? We will use feature vectors. We will use a vector to represent all those features. Okay, one data includes many features or a future vector plus label, a label. So here, because we have label, so it is supervised learning. Okay, so you may also get confused now. What is supervised learning? Because I didn't talk about it yet. So here, I want to talk about it. So here, I want to show a diagram here. So in the machine learning field, there are two, two different problems here, or two uh, algorithms. One is supervised machine learning algorithm, and one is unsupervised machine learning. And you may also give another one is reinforcement. Machine learning algorithms. And this may not be uh, included here. So for the supervised machine learning, we have two different problems. One is classification. Another is regression. These are two main problems we may have in our, in our real life. For example, the classification problem, it means that you want to classify something. So in the classification problem, the data is discrete. Actually, all of our data is discrete, right? Here we know our data, one data is just uh, a future vector, a future vector, and plus a label. So this is discrete. So the data, discrete data here. So we want to make a prediction. So you can guess what is our uh, prediction? Is it discrete or continuous? So the predict, predict. After the prediction, we will also have discrete. 
our prediction is also discrete. But for regression, it is different. So, for example, I can draw a diagram here. So this is the uh, area of the house represented by X. So this is the price. So our data may be something like this. So this is our training data we have talked about. OK, you can see these data are also discrete. And then you change some model and then you make a prediction, predict. So for example, your model is something like this. It seems to be a very good model here. So this is your model. Okay. And you can see that once you got this model, so this is a linear equation. So this means that you can predict y hat, you can predict the price at any future x, right? So this is a continuous line. So this line is continuous. So in regression problem, the data is discrete. But once you got your prediction, it will go to continuous. So it means that your model is continuous. The model will give you continuous prediction. And in classification, the model will only give you discrete prediction. So this is the main difference between classification and regression. Okay. So in this video, we talked uh, about the definition of machine learning, and we talked some uh, common terms used in machine learning. What is data? What is future? What is model? And we also draw a diagram here on what is included in machine learning, what is classification, and what is regression. OK, I think this is the end of this video. I will talk more things maybe in the next week.